are two hours and 15 minutes away. And we're talking with Reverend Billy Graham from his home in Asheville, North Carolina. How is your health? You look very well tonight. Thank you. I feel fine. I had a fall today because I have Parkinson's disease and sometimes I uh, miss a step and fall and that makes me ache and have a, a few bruises, but it doesn't stop me at all. I feel great. Well, I always envy you. Uh, let's get a call in for Billy Graham on this uh, new year, new century, new millennium. Uh, Madison Heights, Virginia. Hello. Uh, Dr. Graham, I just want to ask you, um, are you going to still uh, be allowed to be at the White House, um, the Council of Presidents, um, when the next president is elected? I have no idea. I have to be invited. And, uh, well, I think if it's, if it's, well, I know you know all the major contenders. I know, in fact, you were personally responsible for, as, as Governor George W. Bush told us uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago on this program, you were responsible for his transformation. Well, I heard that. I didn't see that particular program, but I think it would, he would say that God was responsible. I maybe was, a, was an instrument in God's hands. I maybe uh, God helped me to be the one to convey to him. St. John the Divine, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City, the world's largest cathedral, not for the first time today do we hear of Auld Lang Syne. Began in Scotland with Robert Burns and traveled around the world, and not for the last time we hear it tonight. When we come back... Two minutes away, we're just two minutes away, people of the world, from North America, bringing in the new millennium. Number 15, church is shining in the new millennium. Number 15, church is shining in the new millennium. of people planned well in advance for what they were going to do New Year's Eve as we ushered in the new millennium and some people didn't plan anything at all and of course some of us have to work but there is a gentleman named Ed Woodyard 
who planned what he would do back in 1983. He's staying at the Marriott Marquis behind me. Ed is on the phone with us now. Ed. Katie. How are you? We're great. What were you thinking back in 1983 that prompted you to get a reservation here so far in advance? Well, I was, I was figuring that uh, my son was going to be, uh, who was, my wife was pregnant, and we were trying to figure out what year he was going to graduate from high school, and it was in 2002, and we went, holy cow, that means it's going to be 2000. That means there's going to be something going on in Times Square. And it's, we got people waving in the windows there. <laughs> So, so tell me a little bit about who, who's with you, your wife and your son? And uh, family and friends, and we're just, it's, and my, my daughter, Laura. <laughs> tell, tell me about your view. What can you see from your window? We can see the ball. We can see all of Times Square. We can see all the way, the people all the way down past Macy's. We can see, uh, we can see it all. We, the crowd, the everything, the staging, the dancing, and everything. Now, I know the hotel was under construction when you made the reservation, so did that give you any trepidation? No, I was just waiting for them to, to finish building the suite. And how much is this costing you? The uh, Marriott has been very generous and very gracious, and uh, they, uh, they comped us the suite for the evening, which they, has been great. They did? Yeah, they did. They were great. But they said, you know, you can have it, but let us finish building it first. Well, that's terrific. 1,070 pounds. It is six feet in diameter. All of these folks behind me can't wait for that ball to start coming down. Peter, it's coming down on a 77-foot shaft. All of this is computerized, but perhaps as a throwback to the old century, the 1900s. If it doesn't work on the computer, there's a whole gang of strong guys up top of that building. They're ready to pull it down themselves. So Thanks, Arthel. Well, here in Washington, things are booming as well, and right outside there are relatively staid studios. The party's really beginning to rock. In fact, Washington has been in a festive mood all day with official and unofficial parties everywhere. The city organized a street celebration that continues at this hour, and earlier this evening, the President and Mrs. Clinton opened the White House to a hundred or so invited guests before leading a motorcade to a celebrity-packed gala at the Lincoln Memorial. That's where the president will deliver remarks in just a few minutes. And right before midnight, a group of so-called Millennium Children, accompanied by senior citizens, will light a fuse that will run the length of the reflecting pool before setting off pyrotechnics at the Washington Monument. Of course, all of these people who are the guests of New York City, this is the world-famous ball drop. This is the place to be. I don't care wherever you are in the world. This is the place to be, the crossroads of the world. Peter, back to you. Thanks, Dick, very much. And we will not have the ball drop without you, I promise. We wouldn't have on an Emmy New Year's Eve without Dick Clark here in Times Square. Even he, I think, is amazed at the number of people. That's the police department, but I don't think they're saying anything untoward. And as Dick Clark said, this place has been really well uh, controlled for most of the day. Everybody's been in a festive mood. The mayor was here a short while ago. He said it had a lot of bomb hoaxes, but it was all about bomb hoaxes. So let us spend the next couple of minutes moving before we go back to Dick Clark and the ball drop, which is going to be done along with a representative from Doctors Without Borders this year.